Okay, voltage drop also happens due to motor starting. Okay, voltage drop or voltage dips occurs due to large motor starting. Voltage dip is a short temporary drop in voltage magnitude. The voltage drop is large when starting large motors applied to systems having a relatively high source of impedance. So there are two common methods in order to, to determine the voltage drop due to the motor starting which are the constant impedance and also the constant current. Okay, so the constant uh, impedance, so as we know that voltage drop equivalent to current times with the impedance. Okay, so when we talk about constant impedance, means that the impedance is constant. Okay, and when I is high, then therefore the voltage drop also will be high. Okay, and then the second one is the constant current. So when constant current is current is constant, okay. So when the impedance is high, then the voltage drop also will be high. So we look at example five, a fifty horsepower, four hundred and fifteen volt code letter G induction motor is to be started with full voltage applied from a four hundred and fifteen volt to two hundred and forty volt system whose equivalent impedance is zero point zero one plus G zero point zero two. So this one is the equivalent impedance. Okay, ohms per meter. So assume a log rotor power factor of 35% lagging. So power factor is 0 0.35 lagging. So we have to calculate the percentage voltage drop during starting using two methods which are the constant impedance and also the constant current representations. So the solution is um, first, we have to identify what is the log rotor kVA per horsepower. So this one, uh, we have to refer to the name of letter. So what is name of letter? Okay. This one is the table of code letter, name of letter factor in kVA per horsepower for induction. Motor, okay, so the starting KVA required by a motor starting at full voltage is determined from the name plate on the motor or from the manufacturer. In order to identify what is the log rotor KVA during starting, we have to refer to this um, NEMA code, code letter. So NEMA is the National Electrical Manufacturers Association who set the design standards for motors and they have established a NEMA code letter to classify the motors by the ratio of the uh, log rotor uh, KVA per horsepower. So in this question, uh, we have to refer to the nominal code letter with it, which is the G1. Then we have to choose the worst case, which is the 6.30. Okay, so <clears throat> 6.3 for the log rotor KVA horsepower. So then we have to identify what is the log rotor KVA during starting. So what is the apparent? Sorry. Okay, so we have to identify what is the apparent power for this log rotor eh, for the for this motor. So we have to um, calculate the log rotor KVA, uh, which is 6.3 from the table, KVA over horsepower, then we times with the 50 horsepower from the motor. So horsepower, horsepower, we cancel out, then we can get what is the um, KVA log rotor which is 315 kVA. 
then we have to identify what is the log roto current. So for this log roto current, we have to use the equation I equals to S over 3 V line to 9. So this one is the S from here. Then we can divide by set 3 and 415. Then we can get the ampere, which is 438.23 amperes. Okay. Then we have to identify what is the active and reactive power during uh, the starting motor. So this um, equation we get from the power triangle. So power triangle, we know that it has S here. P here and Q here and theta here. Okay, so we know from this power triangle, cos theta is P over S. Then we can get P equivalent to S cos theta. So here, cos theta. So here is the, we use the equation here. Okay, so S is 315 kVA cos with the uh, power factor, then you can get uh, the uh, active power. Then how about the reactive power? So we know that from this power triangle sine theta, we get Q over S, then we get Q equivalent to S sine theta. So here we use the, the equation. So Q is the S, okay? 15 kVA, then you can get sine, this one sine, this one is theta. Okay, then we can get the result for the reactive power. Okay, so in order to identify what is the percentage of the voltage drop, so you have to um, use the method either the constant impedance or the constant current. So for the first one is we use the constant the constant impedance. Okay. Constant impedance. Z. Okay. So um, we have to calculate the source impedance um, the resistant and also reactant based on the uh, power. The active and also the reactive power. Then uh, it will result in the constant impedance and not varies. Okay, so the first one we have to identify what is the log row two for the resistance and also the reactant. So this equation is taken from um, P equals to three I V. Okay, and then uh, V equals to I R. Okay, then this one is equation number one, equation number two. For one and two, so we can get P equals to 3I squared R. Okay, then from here we can get R equivalent to 1 over 3 times P over I squared. So this equation is used in here. Okay. So the resistance is 1 over 3 times with the uh, active power P and then I squared. You can get this answer for the resistance. And then for the reactant, you just substitute um, this one with X and then P with Q, the reactive power. So this one is Q, this one still I squared. Then you can get the value for the, um, the re reactant, which is 0 0.5122 ohm. Then you have to calculate what is the voltage at the motor terminal. For this part, you have to use the voltage divider method. Okay, voltage divider. So the equation will be um, V, uh, this one is Vm equal to Vn times with 
Zs over Zs plus Z equivalent. Okay. So, this one is the voltage at the motor terminal. This one is the nominal voltage of the phase voltage. This one is the source impedance, source impedance and the um, equivalent load impedance. Okay. So, you just use this equation in here. Then you just uh, write, this one is for the Vn, this one is Zs, Zs, Z equivalent. Then you can get the voltage at mid motor terminal is about 230.62 with angle of 0 0.24 degree voltage. Okay, and then uh, you have to identify what is the percentage of voltage drop. You have to calculate first what is the magnitude of the voltage drop by using this uh, equation. Means that the phase voltage you minus with the voltage at the motor terminal. Then you can get the magnitude for the voltage drop. You divide by the phase voltage times with the 100%. Then you can get the percentage of the voltage drop is 3.91%. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next method is by using the constant current. Okay. So the co constant current uh, is you have to take the direct use of the current from the previous that we have calculated, and then um, we use the equivalent impedance. So this equivalent impedance will be varies and it is not constant. The constant is the current part. Okay, so the uh, current is 438.23 uh, with the angle of negative 69.51 degree. Then you can use the voltage drop. Uh, okay, you can use the voltage drop um, uh, using the approximation method. Okay. So, V drop equivalent to, this one is IB, okay, times with the R, okay, times cos theta minus X, the reactant, times sine theta, okay. So, this one, R and X is using the Z equivalent, okay. Then, you can get the magnitude of the voltage drop is 9.74 volt. So in order to get uh, to calculate the percentage voltage drop, so you just take the magnitude divided by the uh, phase voltage times with 100%, then you can get the percentage of the voltage drop is 4.05%. So we compare method A and method B. So A is 3.91% while the uh, B method, which is the constant current, is 4.05%. So, it's almost same. Okay, same result. And then, um, voltage drop due to motor starting. This one is more on the, uh, if let's say, uh, some cases, the log rotor power factor of the motor may not be known. Eh? And the questions, there are not. They are not uh, specified what is the power factor. Then we can uh, use this uh, approximation method. Okay. So in this case, it is possible to have an approximation value of voltage drop due to motor starting by assuming that the voltage uh, drop is in phase with the source voltage. Okay. Because there is no power factor. So, we assume that the voltage drop is in phase with the source, the source voltage. Uh, so, uh, from the previous example 5, uh, by if let's say uh, in the question there is no power factor, then we can use uh, this method. So, V drop, voltage drop is I times with the, um, the impedance. Okay, so this one is the current that we we calculate at the first, uh, the previous slide, and then we times with the Z equivalent. Okay, then we can get the voltage drop. 
the magnitude of voltage drop. So, we calculate the percentage of voltage drop by using the magnitude voltage drop divided by the phase voltage times 100%. Then we can get 4.08%. Okay, so uh, similar as the, um, the previous method. Uh, which is the constant impedance, constant impedance and constant current.